G'day, Bo from Polyair Springs here today. We're going to show you a short video on how to do an install on a 2005 plus Hilux four wheel drive. We've got a Bello Series complete bolt on no drill kit. We're going to open the box up and show you what's it all about and get going. So in the box we have your instruction system, some important notices and some stickers to remind you the air bellows are actually fitted to the vehicle. Your airline and air valves, very important. The airbags themselves, or the bellow series. Your bolt on no drill Hilux top bracket. And your bolt on bottom bracket as well. So obviously there's a pair of those and two bags. So we're ready to go. So whilst here at Polyer we have the luxury of using a hoist and a workshop environment to uh, do the install today, you are quite capable of doing this in your home garage or in the driveway, providing it is a flat surface and you do use some safety equipment like wheel chocks and as you'll see under the back of the car there as well we do have car stands so we suggest that you basically put the car stands up underneath the chassis rail, have the vehicle chocked in place, up out of the way so at the end of the day the car can't move, can't fall over and you can get under the vehicle in a safe manner. All right, so basically step two now, we've got the car up on the, on the hoist, on the car stands and secure. So the first step after that is to get out your airbag and bolt the bottom bracket onto it. Okay, so we've got our bag of goodies here that I've put out on the, onto the hoist, including our what, nuts and washers and all that sort of stuff and bolts, so we're ready to rock and roll. So first step is basically we get the airbag and we bolt it onto the bottom bracket. Got the bottom bracket bolted onto the airbag. We we'll grab hold of one of the top brackets, remove the bolt out of inside the bracket, and we go to the next point. We grab the bracket and we slide it up over the chassis rail. It's bent in at the top, so we jam it up over the top of the strike plate here, and we just rest it there until we get ready uh, after we do the next couple of things, and then we'll come back and put the bolt in later on. So now we've got the top bracket wrapped over the top of the chassis rail, we're ready to install the airline fitting to the airbag. So one of the easiest parts of the job, however one of the most crucial. Uh, it's very important that you only use a half inch spanner, open ended, and you do two turns maximum not to over tighten the airline fitting. So the best part with these metal fittings is we can turn them however we want so they're nice and tight, not exceeding the two turn maximum. Generally, you probably don't need to go over three quarters to a full turn, but then the head of the fitting can spin right the way around. So we can make sure that A, we can get the fitting into its correct position. Plus, when the vehicle's moving up and down, the head of the fitting's got some play there. So when the car's stretched to its potential, it's not gonna pull the fitting out or pull the airline out of the fitting. Okay, so the next step in the process is to loosen off these U-bolts here. Okay, so the main reason for doing so is we want to remove the bump stop that's fitted to the vehicle here. And then we also want to be able to mount this section here of the bag into that underneath that U-bolt. So we're going to loosen the four nuts off under here so we've got enough room to move the U-bolt up and down slightly. Remove that and bolt in the bag. Okay, so we've now loosened off the U-bolts. We can basically lift this up enough to lever that over there, and we can pull the bump stop out. Like that. Now we sit the bag up here in place, and we then put the U-bolts in over where my fingers are here now. Okay, so now we've loosened off the U-bolts completely, removed the bump stop, and replaced it with the bottom bracket with the bag attached. Okay, so I've just finished nipping up the U-bolts. 
Now to the next step is we want to raise the vehicle up and attach the top bracket. Okay, so now we're just going to install the top bracket bolts into the bag. Finger tight to start with is fine. Until we just find your position. Okay, so now we've got the bracket bolts nipped up into the bag enough that we can still move the bracket from side to side if need be. We're ready to install the bolt to go through the chassis rail. Okay, so now we've moved the bracket into place and installed the cross bolt. It's just a matter of double checking that you've got the top and bottom bolts holding the bag into the bracket are nice and tight. Okay, we don't want to over tighten these, nice and firm using a 916th open spanner. So now we've finished that step. We have just finished tightening up the top bracket bolts. We've nipped up the bottom bracket bolts as well. The U-bolts nuts have also been tightened and everything is now fastened and secure bar the cross bolt here from the top bracket through the chassis rail. So that is the last thing to do other than installing the airline. So all we do now is we need to make sure that this bracket here is firm up against the chassis with no daylight underneath and ready to go. And then we use a 19 mil spanner at the back on the line lock nut, an 18 mil socket on the front, and we do it up. Okay, so now we've completed steps one through 12 in the instructions. The whole bag, the brackets, the U-bolts, the air, line, elbow, everything is secure, in place and done. The next thing you would do is repeat steps through one through 12 on the other side of the car. It doesn't matter what side of the car you started on. This side obviously is the left hand side. We went now and do the right hand side and redo those steps. So once you've then done that, you can pull the airline out of the bag. And the instructions say to basically cut the airline in half. It's one whole piece, cut the airline in half and then you want to go through a routing procedure of where suits you. In instance today, we've decided to go through, we will run along the leaf spring and run up to a spot we're gonna drill a hole in the side step because it's reasonably convenient that for this car considering it doesn't have any rear bumpers that you could drill through at the same time. So it's sort of personal preference when you go to start running the airline as much as the instructions do say to keep it out of the way, keep it keep it in nice and neat, secure it tightly, but allow it enough slack to allow for articulation for the vehicle to move up and down. Okay, so now we've got the cordless drill. We're gonna run a 5 16th drill bit. We've marked our spot and we're gonna drill a hole. Let's go. Okay, so now we've drilled the 5 16th hole into the side step uh, to allow the airline to come through. And I've also cut the end of the airline off where I need it to be, so at the length I want it to be to run it uh, into that hole. So we've used today an airline cutter. Um, basically it's no hassle if you want to use a Stanley knife or a, or a razor blade. The only thing is you want it to be nice and flat, so use it on a flat surface and cut nice and flat. If you have it on an angle, these are what we call a push to connect fitting. If the hose is cut on an angle, it may not seat correctly and there's a very good possibility that the airline will leak. So nice straight cut and you should be fine. We call this a push to connect fitting and it is exactly that. We've cut the airline, we've got the fitting and it's literally push in. Now you can't pull it back out again. We basically angle that through, run it where we want it to go, pop your uncle. So now the bag's installed, the airline's run, we've got the pump plugged into the airline coming out of the side step. The next step is to in inflate the bag to 60 pound and check for leak. So let's go. Okay, so we've got about 60 pound there. I can't see or hear anything. We're pretty good. So now we can let that back down to around 10 PSI, depending on if there's a load in the back of the ute or not. 
I would then suggest to recheck the bags in 24 hours time to see if there's any loss of air. They can generally lose up to five pound or so just over the course of settling in with the airlines and whatnot. If it loses more than seven pounds in 24 hours, I would suggest to check for a leak.